Alright guys, it's Kitran here, the Unnecessary Programmer and welcome to my channel where I optimize daily aspects of my life that for sure don't need any optimization. I was watching Tech Lead's video on anti-patterns the other day when I thought, you know what, this is actually some pretty cool advice and then I went on the internet and tried to search for some good business logic and some good tutorials on how to destroy it and what specifically to do but my search was in vain so I decided let's create our own somewhat good quality business logic and try and practice our tech leads tips and destroy this code base ourselves let's go and secure our job so I decided to write down something with a little potential to be a business logic and it is charging customer for a certain product with a scheduled operation. Instead of database, I just created a static list, but in real scenario, there should be a database repository there. Then we added two blocks of business logic, one that notifies the customer that the payment is coming soon and another spring component that charges the customer if there is enough balance. If the balance is less than the product's price, we just remove the product and set it to no. As I said, pretty basic, but after all, this is all we need for our job security video. Okay, uh, we now have our business logic. It's not the best thing, but it will do the job for this video. Uh, now it's time to put tech leads tips in action and destroy this code base. And of course, secure our job <laughs> first things first, let's hit tip number 7 and just start to refactor the code. I thought it would be a good idea to merge the two schedulers into one and then break down all the methods into many small methods that are quite useless. For the notification of course, we need to extract a lot of useless variables that later will be passed to a notification method. This way, we are covering tip number 6. Of course, we are not going to just move the notification, we are going to over-engineer this method and over-complicate it. It will use a string builder, for no reason at all, but because I want to. Let's add an additional no pointer check, even though it's pretty impossible to get no pointer after we declare the new object in the beginning of the method. 
Of course, we are going to check the notification message because we do not want to send an empty message to our customer. I think we also cover tip number 5 here with this useless function. Now let's continue to our tip number 4 and document our code very well. Setting the notification date seems too straightforward for my taste. So let's heat it up with tip number two and create a cool one-liner that does nothing in itself. Nice. Gently tap that like button and subscribe button and let me know what you think down in the comments. Now. Let's continue with our anti-patterns. Now, number three is one of my favorite tips. The glorious recursive function that I have been asked on absolutely every interview for a job. But in my whole career, I actually wrote only one recursive function that made any sense. I guess writing crappy code is hard. I placed the minus minus on my iteration variable on the wrong place. Uh, okay, works fine now. Let's do the same recursive magic on the process of customer's renewal of product. <laughs> we can continue following the tips and at this point I will shut up and let you enjoy the cool process. Cool guys, we tripled the amount of code and I can say we raised the complexity a little bit. Imagine a real project and what could be done by following these anti-patterns. Okay, um, that was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you can check out the source code down in the description. You can also check out the ex-Google, ex-Facebook tech leads video. It's pretty educational. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think, um, look around my channel, there might be some other fun stuff for you to see, and uh, see you next week, bye!